So being a liberal millennial filmmaker living in East London who is naturally curious, I feel like our country is doing a lot of things wrong at the moment. But I just got back from a country that is relatively new and they looked around and they were like, we're gonna do things our own way. We're gonna do stuff differently to everybody else. And it was one of the most intriguing trips I think I've ever been on. Welcome to Singapore, home to 5.8 million people in a country which is just half the size of the city of London. Singapore is one of the most diverse places on the planet. It's one of the smallest countries in the world and it's also one of the richest countries in the world. And this all happened after Singapore split from Malaysia on August 9th, 1965, transforming itself from a third world state into a city of the future. And they did this in just 54 years. Language, culture, religion. This is not a Malay nation, this is not an Indian nation. Everybody will have this story. Equal. I'm here in Singapore. This is week five of a five week stint of traveling. Week one, I was in Belfast for Power of Video. Then I was in Toronto, Canada. Then I was in Cornwall, England. And now I'm here in Singapore. Extremely different parts of the world. Singapore has been way off my list for a long, long time. It's a city of innovation, futuristic architecture. Its gardens around the city are incredible. Stories of like, it's amazing street food, it's communities and all living harmoniously with each other. I've been here a week now and every day I'm learning a little bit more about life in Singapore. And I'm still trying to get my head around how this country is only 54 years old. And that's because the infrastructure is just so well designed. Their subway systems are pristine. Singapore is on the equator, so it makes it extremely hot and the humidity is like 84%. But the way that they built their buildings, the city has built them in a way that the airflow from the bay can still travel between the buildings. So they're strategically placed to allow the maximum amount of airflow throughout the city. Now, I'm not sure how much it's working because I'm extremely hot. I'm at one of the sky gardens here um, in Dalston. I'm gonna try and get to the roof. I think it's open to the public. Quite a long way down. Okay, the city is one of the cleanest cities that I think I've ever seen. It also feels like one of the safest. I'm like walking around with all this gear and I'm not really worried about it one bit. And on the subway here, as we're going from station to station, you still have 3G or 4G on your phone. It's not like New York when you're like one level under. This is like London, like you're four levels down. This is the fourth escalator I've taken to get out of here. Still out 3G, funneling through Instagram that whole time. I know I probably shouldn't be, but I can. I remember I was talking about how the air flows through the city and how the buildings are built. It's, it's a bit like these buildings here will be designed in a way so the air travels through. They spend more time in prepping sustainable ways of building buildings so it's more environmentally friendly. A lot of other countries don't do that. They think it's a waste of time or cost too much money. But here it's mandatory. So they have to do it and put in that extra bit of time and money. But it in turn makes Singapore a better place. <laughs> I think it's time to leave the sky garden and get to the main point of this video which is how did this small island compete with the likes of hong kong china japan all these big countries in asia how did this small island compete with all of this and build all of this in 54 years I sound like jeremy clarkson in 54 years <laughs> Singapore has like zero resources, like none. Everything is imported, but what they do have 
is people that are willing to work really, really, really hard. And when Singaporeans decide that they're gonna do something, they do it to the best possible standards, which you can see all across the city. Like Marina Bay Sands, besides it being now a staple of Singapore, it was built on reclaimed land from the sea. From having a great work ethic, they also have a great school system here. And education in Singapore is pretty fantastic. Everyone is pretty much bilingual. You would know at least two languages. And that strong work ethic and a great education helps their economy. They have one of the best economies in the world. And that comes from Lee Kuan Yew and his vision for Singapore. And right now, you might be like, yeah, well, obviously, of course. Or you also may be like, who's Lee Kuan Yew? So let me give you a brief history to the founding father of Singapore. After independence in 1965, Lee Kuan Yew, the first prime minister, had a vision for what Singapore could be. He was known for his pragmatism and flexibility, but had not been held back by ideologies or policies that hadn't worked in the past, and stressed the importance of racial harmony. His most urgent task was to tackle the high unemployment in the state. So Lee worked to attract foreign investment and turn Singapore into an international financial center of Asia. But with a thriving economy that raises the price of housing, Singapore is now one of the most expensive places to live, yet there is next to no homelessness. The Housing Development Board ensures that everybody in Singapore has somewhere to live. Lee Kuan Yew passed away in 2015 and is widely respected as the founding father of Singapore. He was known for his heavy restrictions and rules that he imposed, but they don't seem to be central to his success of building a thriving state. That seems to come from following pragmatism and breaking the conformity and trying something new with the vision of Singapore being at the forefront of his plans. But something I'm struggling as a Westerner to get my head around is Singaporeans very much trust or they have trust in their government to do what is best for the country and for the people. So in Singapore there is lots of rules. Some rules to me and you perhaps that may seem a bit weird. I don't think you're allowed to hum on the subway. You can't eat or drink on the subway. You can't have chewing gum. If you drive there's very high taxes on cars. So I have a car here. It's very expensive. But all these things come with a caveat, right? Like that is to keep the city cleaner. There is less crime. There is less cars, less emissions. This this is Gardens by the Bay. It's incredible. It's just like this eco-friendly part of Singapore. It's just like this huge man-made forest. Everything's so clean and sustainable. A lot of Singaporeans think, okay, well, if that's the price I have to pay to have a cleaner city or have a better way of living, then great. But there isn't as much freedom of speech. I mean, in fact, I don't really know if there is freedom of speech. But whatever it is, you still feel very happy in Singapore. There's no war, there's no fight. Good way of living. We're very proud to be a Singaporean, I must say. But it's interesting because that's what I'm trying to get my head around as a Westerner. Uh -huh. In the UK, uh -huh. our government is a bit of a mess right now. Oh, is it? And yes, it's not good. And oh. people, the people don't trust the government. And oh. it, it's a bit of a mess. No, no, down here we were for the government. But there are other drawbacks. With Singapore being so small, there are issues with surrounding countries. For example, the haze you can see behind me here. This week in Indonesia, they're burning the peatlands, which is basically producing this toxic haze, and it's coming over to Singapore and Malaysia, and it's just sitting over the city. Been here a week, and I can already feel it. My nose has started to like be all blocked up. I'm feeling a bit coffee. And it's awful, it's toxic fume. But Singapore isn't big enough to push back against those other countries because it needs them for resources. So it can't release anything. So this happens once a year. The sky is not always overexposed in my videos. It's just that this haze has been here all week. But yeah, they have to, they're putting up with this and it's not from them, it's from Indonesia. And honestly, I could just go on and on, but I don't want to take up any more of your time. Whichever way you look at it, Singapore is one of the most innovative countries. Even its airport is an attraction. I mean, look at it. This is the best airport in the world. If you noticed, um, I, I, ha I had a haircut. I paid $8 to get this haircut. Um, it's a bit, a bit uh, Jeremy Renner in the new Avengers film. Not sure how I feel about that. And I have to admire Lee Kuan Yew and Singaporeans for what they have done in such a short space of time to turn this country from a third world country into a first world city of the future. Gardens by the Bay is a perfect example of 
what they've done and what other cities should do. So that's it, that's my time in Singapore. I'm in my plane clothes, ready for the 13 hour flight home. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new around here, my name is Andy. I make videos about things that make me curious. If you like this video, the like and the share and the comment, that helps for the, the YouTube algorithm. And um, yeah, you can subscribe to this audio. I'm sorry, this is bad. I'm in a shopping mall. It's, it, it's late. Um, I'm gonna go. Okay, you can, you know, the subscribe and bell, all those things. Okay, bye.